Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and & Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of my sewing and dressmaking themed live question and answer session that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday the 16th of January. So I will be answering lots of questions that have been sent in beforehand, people looking for some advice and tips about their sewing and dressmaking projects and then other questions about recommendations for different pattern and fabric combinations. So lots of inspiration to be had. We have started receiving all of our new fabrics now for the spring and summer season. So I've got some of them to show you as well. I've got the new Liberty Tan Along collection too. So lots of lovely things to look at and hopefully cheer you up this January. If you are watching on YouTube and you've got a question that you'd like me to answer in another week, then feel free to leave a comment below or you can email the shop. I'll put all of the contact details in the description to this video or you can send me a message on Instagram as well if you, if you use that platform too. I'm going to switch over to the live video now. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Welcome to my live for this week. I hope you all had a nice weekend. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining. I've got lots of things to show you tonight. All the new stuff starts to come now, you see. So yeah, we've got lots of lots of new fabrics in the shop. So you can you can you'll be able to see them in the just arrived section this week. And um, some of them aren't online yet. They will be going online tomorrow. But I'll give you a little sneak peek tonight and show you lots of the new stuff. And then next week, because it's the end of the month, I'll do like a new fabrics roundup video on YouTube as well get back into my groove of doing them every month. I don't, I don't usually do it in December because um, the end of the month is like Christmas in December, obviously. So it's not really like the right time to do it then. But yeah, we'll get back to the monthly new fabrics videos. So they're always at the end of the month and it's a really good way to see the fabrics up close. And I always do the little videos in daylight so you get a really good idea of what they look like. Um, we do also, remember, we do also have little videos on our fabric listing pages now as well. So you can always have a look at that. It gives you a bit more idea of the, like, the texture of the fabric and the drape and things. Um, hi from Florida. I can't watch live at home, so this is a real treat for me on holiday. Hi, Jim. I guess it must be like the morning for you, afternoon maybe. Um, well, it's lovely to see you all and I hope you're doing okay on this Monday in January. Um, and this next hour is just going to be like a little bit of light-hearted fabric and sewing chat. Hopefully just give you some distraction from, from life. Just immerse yourself in the fabric. I've got lots of questions that have been sent in beforehand. But as always, if you've got anything you want to ask me as I'm chatting along, then feel free to leave it in the comments. And then I'll try and keep up up to date with um, all of the things that you're asking. Sometimes I kind of lose track of what the comments are because... Instagram varies in um, how, it how it's showing me who's joining. So sometimes it will like list literally everyone who's joining and then other times it kind of um, groups it together and it'll just say like and the number of people that have joined. But when it lists everyone, it, I then end up missing comments sometimes, but I am gonna really try and keep up with them. Um, Trudy, hi from Essex. Golly, it's cold tonight. I know it's a cold week, isn't it? Um, Somebody's in a chilly North Oxfordshire. I know I've, I've basically been wearing this sort of scarf thing as like a blanket all day, like kind of around my neck. Snowing in Orkney. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's going to be snowing a lot, isn't it? I have some wool from your lovely shop to make a Cambria duster. Do you have any bias binding that would work? Because I have no patience to make my own. Um, yeah, we, I'm trying to think, we probably... See, I don't know, I would feel like maybe you would want to do it with cotton bias binding, but the the it's like poly cotton bias binding that we've got. Have you ever looked at the at the bias binding method where you make continuous bias binding out of a square of fabric? And depending on the width of binding that you make out of like a 50 centimetre square of fabric, I think you can get maybe even like eight or nine metres. It's not as painful as you would think. Um, and you just get your get yourself a bias binding maker and that'll make it a little bit less painful. Um, I would be tempted to have a look at that. I've got a video on how to do that on my YouTube channel from way back, but the method has not changed. Um, 
see if you can convince yourself to do that because then you could choose like a really nice liberty print or something It'd just be a bit more unique and extra special welcome distraction from fighting a virus oh i'm sorry no sojo for some days so lovely to see you i know look that is a, it's, a, it's like a weird time of year for sewing and if you feel like you've not got any sojo you're not getting any motivation don't worry about it just don't put pressure on yourself it can make it worse sometimes you just need to like take it easy and and um, maybe like sort out your sewing stuff or um yeah just have a look around for some inspiration and um, will you be getting the bias binding makers back in yeah we should be um we do yeah we should be getting them back in they're usually like a regular thing that we stock you can do like a stock notification request um or drop us an email as well we'll make sure we let you know when we've got them back okay so the new things that i wanted to show you this week i'm not going to be able to show you them all because there's just too many but i'll show you some more next week and then as i said i've got my new fabrics video next week too so the new liberty collection and um, for spring summer 2023 I'm not going to show you all of them because there are quite a lot, but I'll sort of give you a glance and then I've picked out my favourite ones. They also weigh a ton. Um, so we've got all of these ones here, as always, just the like really nice sort of detailed little prints and really nice colours and things. So a few there. If anybody wants to see any me to open up any of them up close, let me know and I will do. Um, and then the other little stack that I picked up to show you um, is this one here. Again, there's some really lovely colours in this one. A really nice sort of palm leafy one there, which is cool. Um, more sort of painterly vibes in this one, I would say. And then these ones are my favourite. Um, so um, we've got two, two colourways of the... Liberty fans will recognise this is the Betsy print, that classic Betsy print that's been in loads of different colourways. But I don't think I've actually ever seen it in a single colourway before. So like a really nice um, blue colour and then a really nice ochre colour as well. But still that classic, same scale of the Betsy, same same like details and design and stuff. It's just coloured like as a one way colour. Um, and then this one here, which is one of their, their new ones. Those are the Betsy ones are kind of like from a classic collection, I guess, really. And then this one is pickup sticks. Um, and I just really like the colours in that. And then it's got these sort of tulipy kind of flowers in it. I think that's really nice. Um, so, so yeah, they're my favourites. But then they are all online now. Um, so you can have a look at them at the moment. Um, okay, so Carol saying, I finished my Zoe top from my first sewing society kit. There will be more. I know that is like a really addictive project to make because it's really fun. And then when you wear it, you're like, oh, I need to make more of these. Um, okay, please open the blue with birds. Blue with birds. Yeah, sure. This one is a bit like, um, you know, the to like topiary sort of um, hedges. It's almost a bit like that. And then it's got these birds flying on it. So sort of like gradients of blue. It's very detailed. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, I watched your recent tips video the other day and took the plurge and cut a printed pattern and made a toaster sweater from a fabric I've been saving and it felt so liberating. Well done. Virtual high five to you. That's excellent news. Um, okay, then the other new ones I wanted to show you were a range of these really lovely double gauze fabrics that are quilted so they're double sided so it's basically like two layers of cotton double gauze and then it's got a polyester wadding in the middle and this sort of diamond quilted effect and um, so these are the ones that are going to be online from tomorrow okay so this is the redwood quilted cotton double gauze fabric and it's 26 30 a meter and it's 70 percent cotton and 30 percent polyester because the, the wadding inside is polyester so we've got four colours of this. This one's the redwood. We've got a navy. I've not got that to show you because navy is navy. And then we've also got this one, which is powder pink. Clearly my favourite because I love pink. And then this one is sage. So it's like a nice sort of, kind of like a pale green colour. So the Megan Nielsen Hovea would be good for this. The green line Tamarack, the new one from Closet Core, which is part of their sort of membership one. That's like a quilted jacket as well. Um, Fibre Mood have some jackets as well that would be nice quilted. I think there's one called the Molly, um, which would be nice quilted, quite similar to the Tamarack, um, and it's, but it's got a hood. Um, the Tamarack does have that hood extension as well. But yeah, I think that would be really nice for more of a sort of spring, spring-like jacket. 
and then we've had some really lovely stripes as well which this you know this is the spring summer fabrics remember so um they are very sort of like bright and light and nice and nice and fresh and um, but some really nice stripes here again i won't go through all of them but if anybody does want me to like put open out any of these then i can do um but i will be showing them all up close and in detail in my new fabrics video which will be out next week um, so, so yeah, the liberties are online now, but the other ones will be online tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to start going through the questions that have been sent in beforehand and then just ask me anything as I'm chatting and I'll try and keep up with what you're asking too. Okay, so the first one was, what needles do I need for jersey? So ideally, you really need these jersey ones here, also called ballpoint needles. And the difference with these ones is that the tip of the needle is ballpoint. So it means that as the stitches are getting formed, the needle sort of like pushes through the fibers of the fabric rather than like stabbing it or piercing it. So the idea is, is that it's then less likely to to like make little holes in the in the knitted fabric. And um, then the stretch needles are also ballpoint as well. So jersey and stretch, they're both ballpoint. So other brands of needles might just call them ballpoint. It's basically the same thing. Um, but with the stretch one specifically, the difference with these is that the eye of the needle is a little bit higher than regular, like these ones or just standard needles. And when the stitches are getting formed in the machine, it means that the loop that's created as the stitch is formed is a little bit bigger because the eye of the needle is higher. So it means that the stitches that are formed are even stretchier. So the stretch needles are for like really stretchy projects, very close fitting things or where you're using fabric that is very, very stretchy, got a high percentage of lycra in it. Um, and it just helps to make sure that the seams aren't gonna pop open. Um, so that is, that is the needles you need for Jersey. Okay, the next one was um, asking about pleasy fabric and um, my attempts to make anything other than a skirt have been disasters. There's very little in the way of tutorials online. If you have any tips on how to work with Plissé or know of any patterns specifically for Plissé, I'd be much appreciated of the assistance. So if you don't know what I'm meaning, the Plissé fabric is fabric that's like, it gets heat set and it's like pre-pleated fabric. The pleats can sort of vary in kind of thickness and formation. So sometimes they can be quite skinny or sometimes they can be like a little bit thicker. I have actually only ever used plissé fabric to make a really simple gathered skirt with an elastic waistband. Um, actually, no, sorry. Um, I've also made it to, I've also used it to make the Closet Core Sally jumpsuit. I made that out of, out of a plissé fabric years ago, probably like four or five years ago now. Um, and I'm afraid it is a bit of a nightmare to work with. You definitely need a Microtex needle because it tends to be quite dense, the fabric. Um, and you need a microtex needle to like pierce through all of that. I did have a look online and you know, admittedly there isn't a lot out on it out there. Um, Mood Fabrics, if you have a look at them, Mood Fabrics had a tutorial to make a tiered skirt, which looked quite nice, maybe something a bit fancier, maybe like different from just sort of straight um, one layer skirt. Um, and then also Crafty So-and-So, which is a UK um, site, they have got um, like a V-neck top, which was made out of Plissé fabric as well. So I saw that one as well when I had a little search. And then, yeah, I have used it to make the Sally jumpsuit before too. Um, so the Closet Core one, that's a PDF pattern. They don't print that one. So you could you could have a look at a few of them. But if anybody else has made anything out of Plissé, please share it and I will read out your comments. Okay, the next question was, I have sewn the waistband onto the Avery leggings the wrong way round, so the seam would sit on the outside. Do you have any tips for unpicking the stretch stitch? And I have a few small holes on the section I've tried to unpick already. Do you think I could just increase the seam allowance to 15 or 20 millimeters for this join? Absolutely, I would be like, pulling my hair out if I was trying to unpick a stretch stitch in that fabric. Um, I would definitely just increase the seam allowance or like if all else feels, just cut, cut it off and kind of start again where you've sewn it wrong. It, depending on what version that you've made of the Avery leggings, if it, if it is the higher version, they are super high. And if you end up losing like half a centimetre and a centimetre off the height of that, I highly doubt you would notice it. Um, if you're making the lower version of the Avery's, then I don't know, maybe you would notice it a bit more, but I would say weighing that up against the pain of unpicking a stretch stitch, I would just cut it off. 
unpicking a stretch stitch is not not fun and yeah there's there's no like easy way to do it especially when it's when your thread really matches the color of your fabric and the stitch is almost like bedded in you probably are just going to end up with holes in which case it's just better to like cut it off make a bigger seam allowance or whatever okay the next one was just so there was a couple that were quite sort of similar or like related to each other so read them out both both together and um, so can you show how to get a level hem on a flimsy fabric when the skirt length seems to be up and down all over the place and then the other one is do you have any suggestions about how to get hems on dresses level when you don't have anyone to help so so yeah they were both about hemming i thought I'd try and answer it together so if you're if it's like a flimsy fabric like a viscose or a rayon or something and you you know you make something and you find that the hem is like wibbly wobbly all over the place which is really common and it can be like that for a number of reasons one reason can be that when you cut it out the the orientation of the fibers or like the threads that have woven the fabric haven't been totally like at 90 degrees to each other so sometimes maybe if it's just like slipped around a bit more as you've been cutting it out that that can cause it but obviously if you've already cut it out and then you're about to hem you can't really do anything about that so you need to let it hang out i would say for like at least at the very minimum like a day and um, maybe even like a couple of days let it all hang out because you'll find just put it on a hanger and like hang it up somewhere because you'll find that that just gravity sort of lets it drop even more the other thing that can make it uneven or wibbly wobbly is your body shape as well so i quite commonly find because i don't really have much shape around my hips or my bottom so i often find that hemlines are like longer on me at the back because i don't have the body shape there to like lift it up um, and level it out so it means that I do have to sort of level out there and obviously depending on your body shape and body proportions that can affect it as well so it's not that you're doing anything wrong it's just that there can be different variables that sort of affect it so in terms of like dealing with this if you have got a friend to help you clearly easier and you can I mean you can buy specific like hem sort of measuring things that's like a measure thing on a stick and you can actually these work also if you're on your own you can get ones where there's like a little pot of chalk loose chalk and it dispenses out from like a little line like a little gap and it's got like a squeezy puffer ball thing next to it so you can literally be standing and set it to like this little thing on the measuring bit uh, bit that goes up and down the, the little pot of chalk that it comes with to whatever height you want it to and then you can just squeeze the puffer thing yourself and then you can stand like twirl around and squeeze this puffer thing and it puffs out it shoots like a little line of chalk all the way around so if you're on your own and you really don't have anyone to help the easiest way is going to be to invest in something like that and um, unfortunately we don't sell it i have used a few in the past i'm sorry i can't remember the brand names of them now there are a few out there but mine, mine have always broken whenever I've had them. It's like a little clip that clips the chalky thick, chalky bit onto the pole. The plastic there always breaks after a while, which is why I just then, you know, I've kind of like fallen by the wayside of it. So that would be just a word of warning there. Um, if you've got a friend and to help you and you want to just kind of make it a little bit more simple, you can literally get like a broomstick and you can like stand it vertically next to you and then put a little bit of tape around the broomstick of the level of where you want your hem to be and then you can like stand with the broomstick vertical and hold it and then get your friend to put pins where that tape marking is around the the broomstick and just like stand around and have pins all the way around and then you can use the pin markings to like cut it and sort of even it out failing that you just look in the mirror see where it looks a little bit uneven take it off try and kind of chop it trim it a little bit try it back on see if it still looks a bit even you know clearly some methods are a bit more precise than others so um but a few ideas there anyway um somebody's saying prim make hem markers could you just lay the garment on top that has the hem at the right length and mark it on your garment yeah you could do i think it would maybe yeah i guess you could i guess you could i was thinking would they have to have like the same sort of style but i guess not it's just like another marker isn't it i hadn't thought of that before um okay sorry i was late joining and i missed the quilted fabric you showed earlier it was made of it's cotton double gauze on both sides 
and then it's got wadding in the middle. Um, unpicking stretch stitch is almost an impossible task. It truly is. Um, can I ask what pattern your shirt is, please? Sure. This is the Fiber Mood Norma blouse, but the Norma blouse actually has a V neckline and I just changed it. I like raised it up a little bit so that it had a rounded neckline. It's actually really similar, I feel, from looking at the pictures to the Anna Allen, and I think it's called the Anthea blouse. Um, but I feel like the Anthea blouse has bigger sleeves. The Norma blouse, the Fiber Mood Norma blouse, the sleeves aren't quite as sort of puffy. Um, and this is in the Atelier Brunette double-sided gauze. It's got like a smaller check on the back. And I liked all the colours so, and I saw somebody had made basically the same shirt and I um, shamelessly copied them because it looked so good. It helps when you can't decide what colour, you just use them all. Um, okay, so let's see, I haven't missed any of my questions here, have I? No. Okay, so the next question was, is it possible to sew an invisible zip with a regular zip foot? I mean, I would say it's possible. I think the results you're going to get are going to be quite questionable because it would be really hard. Um, an invisible zip is where, like, this is the front of the zip and the teeth are at the back. So when you sew an invisible zip on, what the invisible zip foot does is it moves these teeth back. It, like, opens up the teeth so that you can sew almost, like, underneath the teeth. And then it means that you don't see the teeth when you zip the zip up on your garment. So, and it's going to be really hard to like move those teeth back and sew close enough to them without actually sewing on them, which can damage them with a regular zip foot. What may end up happening is that you can only get so close and then it'll just mean on your finished garment, you'll end up seeing a bit of the zip tape, which doesn't look totally great and kind of defeats the purpose of having an invisible zip. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend it. I mean, you could try, but it is really hard and the chances of you like accidentally sewing the teeth are quite high or it's just really hard to get close enough to make it to look good um okay i've done that as i sew on my own using a commercially made dress to get the hem at the right length okay so it seems that's tried and tested technique thank you i recall seeing a video tutorial from kenneth king using a regular zip foot on an invisible zipper yeah maybe i think it's just harder to control um I often use ordinary zipper foot to do my invisible zip and find it easier. Interesting. I've tried an invisible zip with a regular zip foot. I couldn't get close enough to the teeth. That's what I find as well. That's my personal experience. I just inserted my first ever invisible zip and now know that I do need that foot. It just it just makes things a lot easier, I think. Um, Okay, so the next one was, I was going to make the Itch to Stitch Causeway Bomber Jacket and have a medium weight cotton and lining ready, ready to go. If I want a bit more warmth in the jacket but not bulk, what should I use to interline it? So what, I mean, it's, it is quite a sort of um, like that it ends with each other because something that truly is going to be warm is going to add bulk. So like real, real warmth is going to be the Thinsulate interlining, but it is quite stiff. It doesn't really have much flexibility or give it anything. I think it would add quite a lot of bulk. What you could do is, so when I made this Megan Nielsen Hovea for the, as a window display garment um, last year, I put the cotton wadding in it, which is actually like the, the cotton wadding that we have for... Um, sorry, I'm about to cause a fabric avalanche there. It's actually the, the cotton wadding that we use. The, it's like a quilting thing. Um, this is like a pre-shrunk um, cotton wadding and it's quite thin. Um, so I actually used this when I made the whole video. And I think it, you know, it's, I don't think it has really that much bulk. I think it's fine. I mean, if I put it on, you'll sort of see. Obviously, it does give it a little bit more structure, but it's not like massive. So I think you'd probably be okay with that, this particular one, because it is quite thin. Um, and, you know, that extra layer will just add like a little bit more warmth. It'll make it sort of feel more substantial as well. Um, can I ask, please, I'm making my first pair of Nina Lee Portobello trousers and they are too long from the waist to the crotch. How do I shorten it? 
if you've already like cut it out and you're making it you're going to just need to literally like take some off the top here just the, like an inch or a couple of inches so that they, they get sort of pulled up but then it might be if you're like making them again that you just need to shorten the crotch length by like taking a wedge out of the pattern further down before you cut out if you have actually already cut out then you can just just you don't even need to cut it off you can just try sewing your waistband on lower down and then just just see if that helps to sort of hoik it up sort of pull it up and see if that makes it look a little bit better um, that totally suits you. I love the fabric. I know I really like this one. I made it for the window and then I was like, actually, I really love this. Um, okay, so I feel like I want to keep it on now. Um, okay, so the next question was um, the easiest way to remove excess teeth from a zip. So I wasn't totally sure what zip this was meaning. If it's a metal teethed zip, you need to use pliers and a whole lot of force. I, I did that when we um, did the Chalk and Notch Joy jacket as a kit and you could change the length of the zip that we had for that. It was like a metal teeth zip. And if you get pliers and like truly yank it, I mean, I might have like hurt my hands a little bit as I was doing it because you really need to like pull it. Um, but it can be done. If it is like the plastic teeth, I don't know if there is a way to move, remove them, to be honest. I think you can only really take them out if they're metal. Um, okay, the next one was tips for sewing the fibre mood LED fabric darts and zip. So the... The fiber mood LED is a dress that is um it's sort of quite it's not too fitted on here because I actually couldn't see any darts in the technical drawing. It's got quite puffy sleeves, a fancy cuff, like a long kind of swishy skirt with a little gathered bit at the bottom. Um and I would it looks like it's to be made out of like a viscose or a kind of tensile rayon, you know, like a floppy kind of floaty fabric like that. It does have an invisible zip in the center back seam. I would say you could try putting some some lightweight interfacing along that center back seam where you're sewing the zip in just to give the fabric a bit more structure. It might be easier to control it as you're sewing the zip in. I couldn't see any darts in that, so um but but you know if you if you are sewing darts in a fabric like that just just make sure you use lots of pins really um so I, I hope that i hope that helps if you want me to answer anything more specific and you're watching please feel free to ask um uh, okay somebody's asking about this jacket i think did you quilt that wadding in the jacket you are wearing or did you just sandwich it in between so i got i got the the it's like a just a plain cotton lawn here and then i got the outer fabric and I sandwiched the wadding in between and I quilted the whole bit of fabric and then I cut it out and then I made the jacket. So I quilted it before I cut the pieces out. So by the time I'd cut out, they were already like quilted and then I just sewed them together. Um, okay, the next question was, what can you tell us we can expect of G&G Sewing Society kits this year? So I've been working on that a little bit today. Um, we have got a really exciting things planned for the Sewing Society kits this year because it is our 10 year anniversary for, for the business. 10 years ago in April was when we like officially opened the shop for the first time. Can't believe it's been 10 years. So we're gonna, April's gonna be like our, our birthday month and we're gonna coincide the kit launch um, with the, the birthday month. So there's gonna be like a really special, um, special kit that month with very special contents which I can't I'm gonna I'm gonna like build up the suspense on that a little bit more um and we're gonna have a special event to celebrate that on Saturday the 1st of April so there's a little bit of information about it in the Sewing Society um, mid-month newsletter which is going to go out on Wednesday um but but there's that to expect so that's quite exciting but also just generally coming up um, is going to be some fabrics that are maybe in fibres that you might not have tried before. So maybe like fabrics that you've tried before, but not made with those specific types of fibres. So it'll be a, a good way to sort of check, test and check out and just kind of increase your scope and knowledge of different fabrics as well. So there's a few little hints for things that are coming up. Um, okay, the next question was, what is the difference between looped back and French terry jersey? There isn't a difference, they're the same. The terms get used quite interchangeably. So French terry and look back jersey, they are they do mean the same thing. And um, so it's basically when you get a fabric, and um, so here's an example here, and on the reverse, the way that the fabric has been knitted, 
creates lots of little loops on the back. Sometimes they're more pronounced than others. Depends on um, depends on like the, the specific sort of way that it's been knitted. But but yeah, so these ones are quite small. Um, but it would still get called French Terry loop back. So yeah, it's just the same thing. Um, okay, sorry, LED fabric. It has a texture which moves when sewn. I bought this fabric from you in the sale and I love it. Um, it has a texture which moves. I'm trying to think what one you mean. Um, is it a, is it like a crepe? I would just try to sort of prep, like make sure you press it before you work with it. Viscose crepes do tend to sort of, um, if you've washed it, they will contract quite a lot. So you need water in your iron to generate steam and try and get it like nice and sort of, uh, nice and sort of consistent and flat if you cannot make it like a little bit easier to work with I hope that's what you mean been wondering on that French Terry question for some time I know some sometimes these things can be confusing I know it's true um okay so the next question was have you got any ribbing or cuffing that match the right the light gray cozy colors this is the light gray cozy colors here and I honestly feel like every time we get a batch of this, it's almost like the dye lot or like it's slightly different. This particular one looks quite pinky to me. Um, but anyway, I find the best matches that I can. They're not exact matches, unfortunately, but there's a few options here that sort of like tone with it. Um, so this one here is the marled grey cotton tubular ribbing fabric. So uh, that's what that looks like there. It's obviously a little bit lighter. And then this is a bit more sort of like warmer biscuity, but I think it still kind of tones in. Um, so that's like the cuffing that's on a card. Sorry, I don't know what the actual shade of that, but um, it kind of looks a bit oatmeal-y or like cream to me. Um, if you can't find it, let me know and I'll, I'll check what one it is and I can send you the link. Okay, the next one was pattern suggestions for the Octavia Stippled Dot Crinkle Fabric. Um, we've actually sold out of this now. It was really popular in our sale after Christmas, but it's a, it is a viscose crepe that's got a sort of pink background with kind of red splodgy dots on it. It's really nice. Um, and it was, fe I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones that was featured in one of the Fiverr Mood magazines. Um, so, and I now can't remember what pattern that was, but one of the fiber mid patterns. Um, but as it is just like a really nice sort of viscose crepe fabric, there's loads of things you could do with it. Um, from something like more simple, like the Tilling's, Tilling the Buttons Indigo or the assembly line cuff top, quite simple options. Um, or something a bit more full on, like the Friday Pattern Company Saturday set, which is a nice um, blouse and a skirt. Um, or a bit more de something with a bit more details or like features in it, gathers and tucks and that sort of thing. The Tilling the Buttons Marnie would be nice as well. Okay, the next one was, please could you suggest suitable fabrics for the Merchant and Mills Quinn trousers? Winter and spring options, please. So the Quinn trousers are like a sort of sailor inspired style. They're really nice. They've got um, buttons at the side, both sides here, and then welts at the back, and then like a little sort of like tab thing that makes them a bit tighter at the back as well. It's really nice. Um, so you do need something that's non-stretch, a medium weight woven fabric. So I have got over a couple of he couple here that would be good. Um, this first one, the tags at the other end of the tube. Um, this is the fabric that was in our Anna Allen Philippa pants kit. And it is the dark navy sanded cotton twill fabric. It's 14, 20 a meter and it's a lovely weight for trousers. It's really nice, give a really lovely smart pair. The other one that would look good, which is actually the fabric that was used for the making backpack but it's 100% cotton as well it's the um this is the navy cotton bedford corduroy fabric and it's 1680 a meter so it kind of looks a bit like corduroy but it doesn't have a nap so it's got a really nice texture on it and i think that would be it's a nice sort of weight and structure for that 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 sort of shape and kind of style of trouser as well and um, so they i would say they are the sort of best kind of structured ones that we've got at the moment so hopefully that gives some inspiration um, did another question come in there? What is the easiest way to do a small shoulder adjustment, please? If you have a look at the Helen's Closet blog, so just type into Google Helen's Closet shoulder adjustment, you'll see her tutorial and it, um, it tells you how to how to adjust like the length here, basically. So you can either increase it for a, a, a broader shoulder or make it narrow. It's really easy to do. Um, and that's a very clear tutorial as well. I've used that one myself quite a few times. It's nice and easy to follow. 
Um, okay, the next one was, can you suggest a beginner's slash intermediate wrap dress pattern for some stretch velvet, please? So the Cashmere Appleton is a really good one. It's got um, a wide size range from a US zero up to, I think it's a US 34, but it also has lots of cup sizes as well. Um, so we did that as a kit a few years ago. It's a really nice sort of classic wrap dress pattern. Um, the next one was suggestions for a coat lining with a pattern rather than a solid color. So it is really hard to get nice patterned lining fabric that is like your classic sort of slippery lining fabric. They don't, they, they very rarely exist in my experience. Sometimes you get ones that are like textured or it's almost like a bit of a jacquard, like it's got a pattern woven into it. Um, so what my suggestion would be is if you want something patterned, you want your coat to like look fun on the inside, is to either use a cotton lawn for lining the front and back bodice and then just use the, the regular like more slippery viscose acetate, whatever it is, lining for the sleeves so that you can still get the coat on and off. You could also use a patterned viscose as well. Um, and that would give you that would give you like way more options in terms of patterns, but then the practicality of getting the coat on and off is maintained because you've got your slippery lining in the sleeves. So that would be my suggestion there. Um, sorry to ask a basic question. No props, no questions are basic. Are you supposed to wash the fabric before dressmaking? Ideally, yes. It's good practice to wash it because fabrics can change the first time you wash them. They can shrink or they can change texture. Um, or it might be depending on the way that the fabric's been made or what type of fabric it is. Sometimes they can have like a coating on them and it just makes them feel a bit sort of nicer, softer, fresher if you wash them before you make the garment. Um, it's even more important, I would say, with stretchy jersey fabric because it's more common for that to shrink on the first wash anywhere between five and 10%. So um, if you, one one thing to watch, normally the pa the pattern, requirements on like a stretch garment will include that it will like would tell you to get a bit extra to probably accommodate some shrink shrinkage but one thing to watch out for which i feel like customers might have been caught out with before is that if you have if you making like multiples of say a t-shirt pattern and you've got your pattern pieces and you think you can squeeze them onto a, like a smaller bit of fabric than what the pattern recommends quite often that can happen it's when you're then purchasing the fabric build in like a little bit of shrinkage so don't don't buy like exactly what you need get like an we sell by the 10 centimeters even if you just get get like an extra 10 centimeters or 20 centimeters it just covers you for that shrinkage on jersey fabric um Okay, could you explain the advantages of PDF patterns over traditional paper patterns, please? I am always between sizes, so tend to trace the most likely size in case I need to go back and use another size. I do have a blog post that is about using PDF patterns um, that I did a year or so ago, but it's, it's still really relevant. I would say the summary headline is, is that I feel like the advantage of PDF patterns is, is that you always know you've got that electronic backup. And the worst case is that if you, you know, you don't want to store your paper pattern anymore or you cut the size out and then you need a different size, you have still just got that electronic file. You can just get it printed again. And because getting your getting your PDF patterns printed is so much easier now, you do not need to print them off on an A4 print it at home and stick them together. It's not needed. You can just send it up. Like we've we've got an A0 pattern printing service. Loads of people do. Um, it's quite easy to like access that now. So I would say it can save you a lot of time and tracing because you need to like weigh up the benefit of tracing it and the and and the time that that takes versus the the chances of you actually needing another size again in that pattern. And also it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm probably like rabbling on a little bit, and I I, I do talk about this a lot. And um, I've got the video that I did recently that was on like sewing misconceptions and misbeliefs and myths and that sort of thing. I mention it in there as well. Um, yeah, it can be it can be quite freeing if you've got a PDF pattern, you just decide to cut into it, and knowing that the the very worst case scenario is that you could just get it printed again rather than having to buy another paper pattern. And um, Okay, does anyone use projectors for sewing patterns? What are your thoughts? Um, quite a few people do. Um, I have never used one. I, I think you probably need to have more of like dedicated like sewing space and 
everything sort of set up to use that but um, I, you know, the people who do use it, I, I hear them speak highly of it, but I don't have any personal experience. Okay, the last few questions here that were sent in beforehand, I'm making my registry out office wedding outfit. Congratulations, that sounds exciting. With an Ogden cami and a long flowy skirt, nice. But I'm looking for a top that is cropped and could be worn over the cami. Any pattern suggestions? I'd ideally like to make it in lace fabric. I mean, that outfit sounds gorgeous. I would suggest probably the Closet Core Celio, the cropped version of that is really nice. You could even have like those bigger sort of dramatic sleeves or just have like little sort of cap sleeves. It's nice. It's quite loose. It's quite boxy. I think it would, you know, it would, it would look nice in a lace fabric as well. Um, Okay, the next one was where I'm at. A fabric for I Am Sunshine jeans. Um, so jeans patterns by I Am Patterns. They need to be non-stretch as well. So <clears throat> you could use either of those fabrics that I showed before, the Bedford cord or the sanded cotton twill. They would both work for that jeans patterns. Or you could use um, our non-stretch denim. This is our 10 ounce, is it 10 ounce? Um, yeah, 10 ounce cone mill indigo rigid selvage denim fabric, which is really nice. This is actually the same fabric that my jeans are made of, but I, I bleached this um, before I made the jeans. I bleached them, um, but it's a, it's a really nice fabric. It wears in really nicely as well. Um, okay, the, <clears throat> the next one was a cardigan pattern recommendation other than the Marlowe. Helen's Closet Blackwood, the Jennifer Lauren handmade juniper cardigan. It's a bit more fitted. And then the cashmere fuller cardigan is also really nice, but it does go from a US, I think it's a US 16 to a US 32. Um, maybe, no, maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe it's a US 12 to a US 32. Um, okay, the next one was suggestions for a padded coat, more like Dovey style rather than the Hovea. Um, the fibre mid Giselle is really nice. I've looked at that quite a few times. Um, I think that's a nice sort of longer padded coat one. Um, the next one was, can you show the two viscose linen planes you stock so we can compare the drape? I can only find one plain viscose linen that we have. It is a rate, we do have quite a lot of colours in the range. Um, and this is it here. I have used it to make um, the Friday Pattern Company Saguaro set and it's really nice. It drapes beautifully. Oh, almost dropped that there. Um, I do have a blog post that is on all the different types of linen-y linen type fabrics that we have. I did that last summer. Um, and I show I show the drape in that a lot as well. So if you want a little bit more sort of detail on that, you could you could check that out. Um, this is it here. This is the, the midnight one. I love this one. Um, it's a really lovely fabric. Really nice to wear and wash and sew with. And yeah, it just it just works really nicely for so many different things. Um, the next one was recommendations for summer holiday sewing patterns. Somebody's getting ahead for the year. Well done. Um, the True Bice Roscoe is a nice one. It's quite a quite a sort of loose, oversized one. It would be nice for like a kind of beach cover up. Um, the Closet Core Fiona and Avid Seamstress Sundress are nice ones as well. Just sort of like classic strappy sundress patterns. That's a bit more of a looser fit, that one. Um, and then a couple of shorts patterns. I've made both shorts version of these. The Megan Nielsen Flint and the Lander pants are both really cute shorts patterns. The Alton Cami, classic summer staple. Um, and then I also made a really nice um, short sleeved Lotta dress for my summer holiday last year. Um, it looks really nice and like a nice fiscal print and maybe for like an evening sort of thing when you're on holiday. Um, okay, the next one was with the needle, would needle cord be too heavy for the Friday Pattern Company patina blouse? Um, so that's this one here. It's got quite a sort of dramatic kind of V-neck and pointy collar, little yoke at the back and then sort of looser sleeves as well. I don't think it would be. I think you could make, um, you could use needle cord out of it. We have got some needle cord that is that is 100% cotton. And then we've also got some that's got a bit of elastane in it. The one with elastane would be too thick, but the 100% cotton one, this one, I think would be fine enough. It's obviously going to hold its structure a bit more than if you made it out of like a viscose or a lawn or something, but I think it would still be nice because um, it is quite thin and it, you know, it makes it feel a little bit more wintry. Um, the next one was recommendations for a shirt dress to make the Rob to make with Robert Kaufman flannel. Um, I would say my suggestions that I've got here are the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges, which is not totally a shirt dress, but it does have buttons down the front. Or they also have a shirt dress called the Matilda Dress. What I would say, the only thing that's like 
like coming to mind if you're making the Robert Kaufman flannel one. I was actually presuming you were using a check, but it doesn't actually say that. Um, I feel like if it's in a check and it's a shirt dress, there is quite a chance that it might look like a bit like a night shirt if it's not if it's not that structured or kind of fitted. That's why I thought the Matilda dress, the Megan Nielsen Matilda dress, might be nice because it's a bit more sort of fitted. It's got a waistband. It's got some other nice details which give it some sort of like structure, which I think look nice. And it, and I, then I don't think in that situation it would look like a, a night shirt. And then the last one I had was any baby clothes pattern recommendations. My top ones are Brindle and Twig, which just do PDF patterns. I've got so many different styles. Most of them are jersey and um, lots of age ranges as well. And they're all like really just simple, like nice, easy things that you would want. Poppy and Jazz also have quite a lot of nice ones for more sort of like detailed things or like sort of cute little features. Um, Ikati is nice. We've got a range of those ones as well. That's a French company. Waves and Wild, also popular. Um, so a few suggestions there. Okay, I'm gonna catch up with the questions that have been coming in here. I've got through all the ones that were sent in beforehand now, um, but if you do have any others, feel free to ask me now. Okay, let's see, how where did I get up to before? Fabulous, Fabuloso can print A0 patterns on the traditional tissue paper, which is great quality. Okay, good to know. So if you like, prefer that tissue paper to work with, that's an option. Um, okay, doke. Can the sew over at Dorothy jacket be lined using waxed cotton? Hmm, I need to have a look at that one for next week because I can't picture what the Dorothy jacket is like right now. Um, I've made the sunshine trousers out of cord and it works really well. That sounds nice. Could you tell me the path? turn name of the jacket you're wearing please yeah this is the megan nielsen hovea which i which actually wasn't part of my outfit i would just put it on to show somebody an example of something and then i didn't want to take it off because it feels really nice any tips on how to add patch pockets to the tamarack jacket that need to be bound on all the edges made in a fleece lined check fabric from you how to hide the joins of the binding um I guess you can't really hide the joins. Maybe, yeah, how would you, I suppose you would maybe just, maybe if you just had the join like in the in the middle at the bottom of the patch pocket, then it might just sort of center it and kind of aesthetically sort of make it look more balanced. Um, But yeah, if it's a square patch pocket, then you, it's, you, it's kind of like you need to do mitered corners, a bit like what you would do on quilt binding. Um, yeah, I hope, hope that helps. I've understood that. Um, Wendy Ward, Kinder Cardigan is good. It's in one of our books. That sounds nice. Um, Simplicity 0814 is such a nice shirt dress pattern. I made view C in a plaid flannel and I've worn it so much. Oh, that's good to know. Um, it's like the Kelly Anorak. Uh, okay, so that was the question that was about the sew over at Dorothy. Yeah, that I can. I think I can picture it now. Um, what was your question again? Can it be lined using waxed cotton? I suppose what if it if the pattern's designed to be unlined, then it's it is a bit like the closet core Kelly. And what I did when I lined my closet core Kelly was I cut out my lining pieces the same as the outer pieces. And then before I actually started sewing everything together, I hand basted the lining and the outer fabric together, wrong sides facing. So it kind of became one. And then as you construct it, then it's like it's already lined. I would call that flat lining. So you could maybe have a think about that. Fabric recommendations for the wardrobe by me, Miri dress, please. I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head what, what that one is. I'd have to add that to my list for another another week so I could have a wee look at it. Tilly in the Buttons Lyra dress is a lovely shirt dress. Of course, so it is. I don't know why I forgot about that one. It is a really nice shirt dress. Does the regatta blue speckled leopard viscose fabric need lining? I don't think it does. I used that to make a forget-me-not patterns Lola dress a couple of summers ago and I didn't line it. It was totally fine. I've made the Tilly in the Buttons shirt and needle cord. It looks lovely, but almost impossible to get a jacket or cardi over it as the sleeves stick to the fabric so much. Ah, yeah, see what you mean. You could overlap like on a piped cushion. Yeah, true. Um, 
There are instructions on how to do this in the Tamarack expansion. Includes the hood collar and patch pocket instructions. Lovely, thanks Helen. Could you use cosy colours for the Blackwood cardigan want to use from my stash for workshop? Yes, you could. It would be a really lovely cosy version. I think that would be nice. Um, okay, well, thank you for all your questions, everyone. As always, it makes it a lot more interesting when you share all your own experiences as well and do lots of chatting with each other. Um, more brains are always better than one. Um, so, so yeah, if you watch out this week for the new, so some of those new fabrics that I showed you at the beginning, I'll be going online tomorrow, all being well. And then the Sewing Society mid-month newsletter, it'll be out on Wednesday. So yeah, there's some like exciting things in there as well to look out for. So watch out for that one. If you aren't signed up to our newsletter already, do so now so you don't miss out. And then I'll see you next week for another Instagram live. And then next, yes, yeah, so then next week I'll have like our new fabrics and my new fabrics video on YouTube to show you as well so that I can go into a bit more detail on all the new things too. But if there is anything that you do like want to see up close a little bit more, then you can always send me a message for next week. I've always put the little question box up on a Saturday morning so you can send me questions there or you can um, just send me messages throughout the week as well. Sometimes they get lost a little bit. I do try and flag them and keep track of them, but but yeah, or you can email the shop as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just, thank you for your thanks, everyone. As always, the fastest hour of the week. Yeah, um, <clears throat> go home and have a cup of tea now, warm my throat up. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and I hope you have a good week and we get through another January week getting, remember the days are getting longer, so it's all gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, I'll see you soon, everyone. Bye.